Want to see how my Stanhopia acidensis evolved since it started pushing spikes? <laughs> it's been an amazing seven weeks which I thoroughly enjoyed and with this video I want to honor Stan the man for being so generous with the blooms, his fragrance and well, how about some details on Stanhopia spike behavior that I have come to observe since Stan arrived in the collection in 2018. This year I had 10 spikes in total of which 8 bloomed out. I want to touch base on what happened to the other two and why they didn't bloom out and maybe that'll help you in your Stan Hope you're growing endeavors. Let's talk about it and well I hope that you enjoy the blooms and how this orchid bloomed out in 2023. Welcome to a Stanhope Your Spike and Bloom Extravaganza. I appreciate you clicking on this video and hope that while you are still watching that you would hit the like button and maybe share it with other orchid aficionados. You see, if root growth doesn't float your boat when it comes to growing orchids, or new growths make you happy because new blooms are on the way, but until the orchid actually blooms out, it's a bit of a meh 11 months of care until the orchid actually blooms, then this video is for you. <laughs> We're going to focus on the main event when an orchid blooms. However, in order for an orchid to bloom, we need spikes to develop without snapping them or losing them to pests before they can actually bloom. Or else we're back to square one, waiting for another 11 months for the orchid to bloom. So two out of my 10 spikes did not make it. And well, while I had 20 blooms on my Stanhopia this year, the count could have been much higher, maybe 25. Yes, I am a greedy orchid grower. I admit that because when it is time for an orchid to bloom, I want more blooms than the previous year. And it was a little annoying to see two spikes not pulling through. That's the first thing I would like to touch base on. What happened to the two spikes that failed and why? As far as Stanhopia culture goes, we understand that it is best to grow them in open airy baskets because the spikes have a tendency to grow from the side or underneath the basket. Growing this orchid in a closed pot will not yield blooms unless you have a very mature Stanhopia that has growths climbing up and higher in the pot, making it possible to have spikes come out at the sides of the growths, which was the case with the two spikes that failed. It is also important for the media of choice to be airy, well ventilated so that any spikes pushing through do not encounter obstacles that will impede their development, resulting in immediate failure. And yes, Failure is immediate when a spike comes up against an obstacle within the first seven days of its growth. If you have tried to help your Stanhopia spikes out in the past to get them to pass through a gap in the basket and your spike failed, that is because it came up against an obstacle and just aborted. Or you may have managed to free the spike from where it was getting caught and the next day you see that the stem is yellowing. You may think you broke something and that is why it aborted. But nope, you were gentle and still it aborted. Well, it is possible that you touched the tip of the spike in your attempt to free it. And the spike registered an obstacle with that simple touch and for that reason it aborted. Any kind of small resistance that interferes with the progress of the spike within one week of its showing will cause a Stanhopia spike to abort. So my two failed spikes, they were not growing along the top of the media, they curled in and downwards. I had two options, leave them to their own devices and see if they get with a program and see the light to come around again onto the surface of the media or try to lift them up try to remove some of the media in and around where they were getting snagged, which would have been the end of the spikes anyways, because there would have been far too much interference that would have caused them to fail regardless. So I left them and hoped to be able to document how they would respond and share that with you. Well, they snagged in the media. They didn't manage to stop their own trajectory and promptly failed. And they failed really fast and the signs were clear because the stem was going white. Now, seeing as I was already noticing more and more spikes growing, I took this development in stride and figured out that maybe someone will one day watch this video and understand that no matter what you intend to do with helping a stand spike out, if it is touched, if it feels as though there's something in its way, it will abort. And 
unfortunately. Which brings me to my setup for my stand, and maybe you can take something away from this for successful future stand. Hope you're blooming, and I will add as best as possible because Stanhopia pots require a very open basket, as in as big squares as possible so that the spikes don't run into any obstacles. And these openings, squares for lack of a better term, have to be on all sides and the bottom as well. So we got that for my stand. But some very open baskets also have a significant depth to them. So I went with a very shallow basket which is intended to allow spikes that grow sideways to find their way over the media and over the edge of the basket makes sense. And yet, in 2022, I still had a spike growing into the corner of the basket, and while the blooms opened, <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly ideal for lack of a better term. <laughs> still, I would not have been able to enjoy the fragrance if I had tried to manipulate that spike in the early stages, and for that reason, I just left it to its own devices. <sighs> Quel dommage! The material that I have my stand on, because that is all that happened, I placed the orchid on the hob filter that you have for your extractor fan in the kitchen or AC. This has been its status quo since 2020. It is not in any way, shape or form potted up. The layer of the filter material was so much more extensive than it is now because once the orchid had settled in and started growing new roots, I started to peel off what I considered excess so that the micro environment that the orchid was creating for itself would be the media supply. And because I noticed that some spikes would not push their way through the filter material, which in itself is light and airy, fibrous but airy and still some spikes could not find their way through that so there was an obstacle and boom spike failure that included new growths they would not be able to penetrate the fibrous mat of the filter causing the concertina leaves which would make you think that this is because of lack of water the symptoms are the same lack of water or the new growth getting stuck as it grows so to stop spikes from failing to push through, including new growth struggling, I peeled off as much of that filter material as possible. And now the orchid is taking over what is left of the material, soon not to be noticed unless we look underneath. So I felt it necessary to go into such great details, seeing as this video is about stand spike specifics, because while my material may have been fibrous, it was light and not something I considered an obstacle. Stan taught me otherwise. And the same would apply if a stan is growing in organic media with bark and moss. Those are obstacles as well. They can easily cause a spike to abort. Even the shallowness of my basket was not an advantage yet. But as the orchid grows higher and lifts itself up, as you can see it is doing so, that will not be an issue anymore. Back to our two felt spikes, even though they were growing up high enough on the orchid, no media to stop their progress, they wanted to grow downward and caught themselves in their own mass of a root system, which is tough as nails, and for that reason they failed. I appreciate you for still being here. Trust me, I know that this may sound very long-winded, and I'm hoping that the blooms in between are a nice visual for the commentary. You see, I did mention at the beginning we grow orchids for their blooms, and there are many sad, oh no, moments, mishaps that we deal with, which will prevent an orchid from blooming. And then we wait another year. So when it comes to Stan Hopias, I wanted to put this video out to give you the heads up that Sometimes there is nothing you can do when it comes to a Stanhopia spike. It will abort for many different reasons, but touching them should not be one of them. If you see a stand starting a spike and it is heading downward without anything in the way, that is perfection. Leave it alone. Don't touch it and it will bloom out. If you see a stand spike coming at an angle and you still have plenty of room between the tip of the spike and the angle at which it is growing where you can already calculate that it is going to come up against something and if you choose to intervene at that point then do. If you need to cut some of the basket to make room for the spike to grow as long as the spike isn't touching anything, remove parts of the basket. This is of course a one-time thing. 
It is a judgment call on your part if you want to take bits of your basket out to allow for the blooming that will last for three days, or if you're going to opt for the spike to abort because it won't have the space. From my perspective, I don't want to be cutting on my basket anymore. I did several years ago because I wanted the blooms, but in the end, this basket is there for life and I am letting Stan do what it wants in there. So I have accepted that I can't win them all. Besides, I now have such a mature Stan Hopia that I don't have to be chasing all the spikes that do funky things in the hopes they will bloom. What I do, however, is move the iron. I slip it up and down where I could when I saw a spike coming in sideways. I tried to anticipate its trajectory and widened the gap of that area with a lot of success this year. I even was going to let one of the spikes come up against the wire again and just call it a dud. But it turned out that even though the buds were coming out of the sheaves <laughs> in the square opening, they push their peduncles far enough out for them to open up and not be squashed within that square where they started to develop. That was a lucky break and, well, I felt like win some, lose some at that moment. <laughs> What was surprising to me this year, however, was how soon I saw the first spike. That was back at the end of May. At first, I thought it was a new growth because Stan has never started spiking in May. And the lead where it did so was one of the youngest leads this orchid has. The first bulb underneath that grew in 2021. I was definitely not expecting that lead to spike two years later, but it was the start. And then bit by bit, there were more up to 10. I kept losing count as I tried to keep track of the spikes. So as you see the images and you counted more or less, forgive me. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Keeping track of the blooms was another challenge because this year it was not a one big spectacular show, but the blooms came in succession, which was incredible in of itself. Stan blooms lasting only three days with fragrances and pristine appearance. Well, that is a reality where the concept of here today, gone tomorrow applies. While the one of spectacle is impressive, this succession blooming was amazing because I have been enjoying blooms for almost four weeks on the go. And well, a big red cinnamon chewing gum fragrance reigned supreme on the east side of the patio. <laughs> and subsequently, east side patio activities increased exponentially. <laughs> Now, I hope that in future I have successive blooming because it gave me time to enjoy everything for much, much longer. It was also a longer season of anticipation this year, end of May to 3rd July, when the first blooms opened, allowing me time to watch, admire and observe spikes as they form. It never gets old. <laughs> Turns out that the early spike took its sweet time to fully open, but it opened on time for when my stand blooms, and that is the month of July. The other spikes weren't that far behind in the progress and grew much faster to also bloom in July. I now have one spike left, and that will be the end of our blooming until 2024. So if my count was not off, I had 10 spikes in 2023, even though two failed, I'm looking for 12 spikes in 2024, with a total of 25 blooms as opposed to 20 this year. That is the goal. Subscribe to the channel and hold me to task and see if this prediction proves correct, or maybe we shall be surprised and get much, much more out of Stan in 2024. <laughs> anyway, yes, subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. Thank you. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. The reason I am already stating goals for 2024 is because right now I have 10 new growths on the way already. I am anticipating 14, if not 15. You see, this orchid pushes out new growths as the spikes are starting to bud up, and those are the early new growths. Once these early new growths are well underway, it will grow several more new growths. So in the past years, I've had 12 new growths or thereabouts. I don't think it is unreasonable to shoot for 14, seeing as I have new leads that are also growing aggressively now. We shall see. 
and I sincerely hope that you're here for it. Because let me tell you, this orchid is amazing. I don't know how much it weighs now, but you can see that everything about the setup and the hanger is heavy duty. I estimated 15 kilos some months ago, and I will stick with that, and that is 15 kilos of orchid. The basket weighs nada, neither does the media, which is now almost non-existent, and it wouldn't include the chains either because they weigh less than the orchid weighed when I bought them. So maybe in 2024, we will have to estimate 60 kilos. <laughs> and by the way, this is only 50% of the original orchid. The other half lives in Portugal. And I will link the video of Fernanda Nascimento orchids and succulents and the time lapse that she filmed and posted. I will have that in the description for you to enjoy. So this way you can see from 2018 what this orchid is capable of if I still had it all in one piece. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I sincerely hope that this video will make Stan Hope You're Growing as thrilling for you as it is for me. I wish I had space for more because they are so much fun. An orchid that you can throw water at without having to worry about it being too much an orchid that you can throw fertilizer at without any concerns for root burn. That, in my books, is an orchid worth growing. I really wish I had space to grow more of these fabulous orchids. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video, enjoyed the blooms, found the information interesting, and maybe it answered some questions you were asking yourself. Maybe a spike did not develop for you and you wondered if you gave it too little calcium, etc., etc., now you know, Stanhopia spikes and obstacles are not a match made in heaven, and the spike in its early stages will consider your touch an obstacle and abort. If you are a tactile orchid grower <coughs> like moi, this orchid will teach you the don't touch very, very quickly. At least it did for me. Thank you so much for watching. Know that I appreciate your time, your support, and all your comments. Looking forward to seeing you down there. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, that you stay safe. Please take care. Bye.